Welcome back to the Troubleshooting Life Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Peters, my co-host, Craig Poston, where we talk about various topics, sharing our experiences on life and finances. So I'm going to kind of ask you a few questions because I think you have a lot of good perspectives of, of course, being a father, being a husband, being an IT professional, and then also as we're, you know, being a real estate investors and budding entrepreneurs. But for the first question, how do you manage or prioritize execution over simply putting it in effort across all areas? When it comes to actual execution is how much do I want it? Right? How hungry am I for it? Yeah. If I put in the effort for it, it's basically just, okay, it, it's something on my mind. I'm a, I might take a few steps toward it, right. but I've noticed when I'm actually, it's something that's in the way that I'm actually hungry for. I'm, I actually start, I run towards it. Yeah. You got like a passion for it. Yeah. 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 So it's not, you know, because, yeah, the effort, like I said, it, it can fall off. And I was just reading an article earlier, right? It depends on, like, if it's uh, extrinsic, intrinsic, right. like, yeah. what, what, where does it where does it sit with you, right? Yeah. And definitely when it's internal, it's uh, definitely a bigger fire, yeah. right? If you have some outside force that might might fall or fail or whatever, right? If you, you may do it, you may not do it, you know, because it depends on how, how hungry are you for it. So yeah. that's usually how I look at the, the situation. Even um, sometimes I look at my goals. All right, you, you may think I'm crazy, right? <laughs> so what I do is, you know how when you have that adrenaline from uh, you're doing a really good run or you just did a great workout or you get really, really, really excited about something, right? So I learn how to, if I look at my goals, I try to f- remember that same energy, focus that same energy towards the goals as I read it mm. and try to see if that's where, I'm, where I want to be. And then if th- they make that same excitement yeah. the same way. Yeah, so like I, I so it, it's ways I try to turn the hunger on, right? Yeah. So because of, again, you can have a set of goals, but that don't mean anything, right? Mm-hmm. That that'll be your effort, right? Yeah. The writing of the goals, that's their effort. Yeah. But the actual execution is you trying to go after it. Like, where does it where does it fit in your life? Why would you want to do that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to actually put it, like you said, fit in your life. Like, say, for example, if your goal is to lose weight or exercise or whatever that is. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't just say, "Hey, I'm gonna." work out today right and then yeah i do it you would probably like hey every day i'm gonna go to the gym at six o'clock in the morning just so i can make it to work at eight o'clock or whatever it is yeah so no i I definitely agree i definitely agree that you know our our passions are what really drive us like you said intrinsic versus extrinsic work internally you know i have a passion for fitness right i love working out and that's you know from things in the past right and of course, you know, it would start off as something like towards aesthetics, like, hey, I want to look better. Yeah. And then as you kind of evolve or, or gain a little bit more experience, you're like, well, looking better is great. You can't always look better forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can still reap the, the health benefits without having to look like, you know, a bodybuilder like Arnold. Yeah. Right? You can still have, you know, good cardiovascular health. You can still have, you know, a good health of like lifting and like a good back, like a good spine, good, good core. Yeah. Um, especially as you're you know, trying to keep up with your kids, especially if they're trying to, you know, play sports, you're like, well, I got to keep up with them somehow. Yeah. Um, so like it, it becomes all those, all those things over time become like your internal value of wanting to stay fit and, you know, be someone that's uh, healthy. Yeah. So going into the next one now, this one's kind of specific to real estate. Would you be able to share an example of a real estate project where effective ex- execution led to substantial returns, even if the effort seemed, you know, challenging? I mean, right now I'm still at the beginning, so all of it seems challenging because really it's, it's more the mental, yeah, mental thing, right? Where I'm trying to tell myself this is the right thing to do. Uh, you can look at numbers, you can, you know, what I'm saying you can plan things out, but if your head's not there, sometimes that's that's the Achilles heel, right? That yeah. if your if your mind is not ready to take that step it, you I mean think about it, I could have had everything in place but if I had a, if I had said the one thing is like oh well it, it, it's not right so let, let's just I could use fear to back out yeah. of it but at this time I didn't use fear to back out of it. I, and I do uh, every now and again use fear but then I'm confused with myself right I'm thinking to myself hey is this me telling myself I can't do it or is this me saying this is the wrong decision because so say take a, a situation where if you buy a primary residence right Mm -hmm. so you're getting into a primary residence if number wise it it doesn't make sense to you especially because you're pulling more funds than you normally would and that also takes away the freedom that you have with your family with other projects you want to do and and sometimes i'm like hey is this is this fear is this is this me saying hey this is the wrong thing to do and then i go back and forth and i go like you 
you can run down this, this certain list and then you go like, okay, well, actually, no, that doesn't make sense because I'm going to put out way more money on this primary resident than I would on this investment property, which actually will in return give me something. Right. So lately my brain when it comes to investments is like, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's look at everything and then let's, let's do it. Make a decision. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's me wanting to make good decisions. One of the things I, I try to think about is, especially as I get older, is like making good decisions, better decisions than I did last time, before, you know, last time around. Right. And it all comes to, yeah, uh, you know, me actually uh, just not using fear, but actually using actual thoughts. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's because that's, that's part of learning. So like it, if we were to like describe learning or define learning, it's literally like the same situation, but a different behavior. Yeah. Right. As in, you know, I've gone through this before. This is, these were the results. What can I do differently now? Yeah. Right. And that that's basically what learning is as in like, like you said, like you, if you purchase a property and for whatever reason it, it went awry for whatever reason, yeah. right? You could just say it, it was fear. It was the market. It was whatever it was. Yeah. Instead of like looking at it logically and saying, no, well, these were the actual circumstances that were surrounding it. Those circumstances may or may not exist now. What do I do now? Right. I, out of all this information I now have. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much, yeah. When it, when it comes to that. So I haven't had anything that's like, I guess uh super, challenging and like i said it's more me it's not and not necessarily the situation because I, I guarantee you if it was somebody else who's already been in that situation and go like oh that's that that's small yes i get i got it you're going to spend uh you know thousands of dollars to get that fixed but that's in the long scheme long um the long-term scheme of things that was small right yeah so then that's kind of like how you have to look at it is down the road will you get this money back most likely especially if you keep the, the home for another 20 years or whatever yeah you know, you're, you're going to get the money back yeah. yeah, no, definitely. And it, and a lot of people will, people that, d that haven't invested in real estate in that, and that was definitely this way in the very beginning, where they only see, or they only try to see the value of real estate for cash on cash return, yeah. as in what rent can I get versus the amount of mortgage that I'm paying, right? But they also don't look at the uh, appreciation of the rent. They don't look at if you're like a real estate professional and actually doing this type of stuff, then you can write off like tax and yeah. deductions, stuff like that. They don't see the additional ways that a property can provide value. And I didn't either, right? Yeah. But until I actually went through it. So kind of going through like how like real estate and execution kind of worked for me is that when I was looking for a property, I'd been looking for a property for like two years. Yeah. Right, for my very first property. And I always wanted either like a, a multiplex or like a, or something to where I could house hack, right? I ended up going with a single family home because I saw a video of someone doing a single family home renting out the rooms and like that was very profitable for them and it was easy living for them as well yeah um so that was like something i was like oh crap like it, it was just new information that i and it maybe it wasn't new information it was just a different perspective yeah on certain information where it was still house hacking it was still the same like basic principles but i didn't see that yeah that way so but yeah so and i just like did it i was like you know this is a nice place you know, the master's downstairs, there's four bedrooms upstairs. I can just rent those out and I could cover my mortgage and then some for, for that place. So I was like, and I think what happened for me, like to really swap from just, you know, trying to do something to actually doing something and doing the execution portion was that I just did something. Yeah. Right. I had to, and it's not like it, it didn't make sense, like money wise or, or number wise it did. It's just that it wasn't like I, maybe my criteria was like too high mm -hmm. where like I wanted yeah. like a certain amount of money. Like I wanted twice the amount of money that I would have to pay for the mortgage, which yeah. isn't ideal and not very, um, or it, it would be ideal. It is not realistic, uh, especially in current markets, right? Where you're not going to get twice the amount of yeah. mortgage from a, at least a traditional way of renting out. So, but like for me, you know, swapping from that effort to execution was trying to just do the execution, right? Yeah. Just do the execution first and then, you know, it, it definitely does shift your mind and I think it makes things go a lot quicker because your your thought process is, isn't from well what if it yeah. is what I know happened right and it's like those uh the saying is like if I knew then what I know now that that's a true statement now it's not you know well I never invested in real estate because this this and this it's because I did invest in real estate and this is the the outcome and this is why I will or yeah. will not continue to invest in real estate yeah no, that's uh, that's a good point. Uh, and I will, another way, another thing that 
how I make some of the decisions. I was listening to, it was this female at the real estate uh, investment associate networking. Yes, yes. I'm trying to get the words out. Basically what she was saying that she does is she keeps her rent low because she doesn't care about the cash flow. What she cares about is the property. It's sure. like, I get people to pay off my property. So she doesn't care about the cash flow. She's looking at the long-term appreciation and yeah. what the house is going to be worth later on. Yeah. Now, and I think uh, one thing that I kind of learned was you'll know how much or how wealthy someone is or how poor someone is mm -hmm. by the, the time horizon they talk about. Yeah. Like, uh, so like there's a difference between someone asking you if they could hold money for like a day yeah, right? or if they could get 20 bucks for the week or for a month, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Whereas someone talks about a year and then they start talking about decades. Yeah. Right. Of like how their money is making money. Yeah. I, I think you it's it speaks volumes on where their mindset is of like just the overall growth of maybe not there's their portfolio, but like of like economics in general. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kinda take that uh in consideration when when I'm looking at properties now, it's not all about the cash flow because in reality, right? If you learn how to balance out your life as it is before this happened, before you made this purchase, then you should be still good after this purchase is done, after you've done the renovations, things like that. So I think in reality, it really is how you take care of home yeah. and it, it, it makes it easier to invest. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think like a lot of things for execution, whether it's like investments or real estate in general, is that a lot of people just have that that fear? Mm -hmm. like a lot, of, like I said, those what ifs of like you know what if it, you know, the market crashes or what yeah. if right? It's it's a lot of things that are unknown, and I'm I used to be, a, I'm like a proponent of like, well, I just don't know. Yeah. Right. So what I started doing was like, well, I want to know. Right. So I'm just going to jump into it. Yeah. Like head first and just figure out like if it burns me, it burns me. Cool. Like I'm I'm at a, I'm at an age or I was at an age where I was like. I still have so much life or nothing yeah. ever guaranteed. But from, from my perspective of, you know, where I was at, I was like, I have so much life to live. I might as well do it now. Yeah. Right. Like at, at the end of the day, I could sell the house. Like, right? yeah. Like I could just liquidate the asset. Like well, what is, yeah. What is really the bad thing? Especially, yeah. Especially when you have equity already in it. So you won't yeah. be upside down when yeah. you, when you sell. So, yeah. So and that's just how I look at it. And, and I started looking at things like time horizons a little bit differently as well as in like, what does my life look at? Instead of just like the next year, mm -hmm. what does it look like in the next decade? Right? Like, what do I want to do for the next decade and how do I get there? Yeah. And hopefully I can get to that thing where I, you know, I can see like even past that, you know, that, that's what helped me at least for executing over just trying to do stuff. Yeah. Hey y'all, if you didn't know, Mine and Craig's mission is to bridge the gap between generations by empowering, exposing, and educating others about financial literacy, new perspectives, and life goals. We can't do that without reaching more ear holes. So if you enjoy this content, then please share this to at least one other person to help us expand our brand and their minds.